everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now it's the season of beautiful, perfectly fitted white gowns, luxurious flower sets and elegant cakes. Yes, you guessed it, it's wedding season. But even though it's supposed to be the most exciting event in someone's life, it can also be one of the most stressful. So today we're going to uncover from a bride and a groom-to-be just how stressful the run-up to D-Day is. I will also be giving you tips on how to prevent the post-wedding blues because did you know many brides get depressed after their wedding day? I'll tell you more about that later on. So are you organizing your wedding and feeling stressed? Or maybe you got married recently and have advice for brides who are going through the stress now or even grooms actually. So missing the wedding planning madness? I don't know if that's you. So this is you, get in touch on our usual channels below on the bottom of your screen right now. So we've got a very exciting lineup for you tonight because starting we have our lovely bride-to-be over here, Dimple Mystery. And we also have our groom-to-be, Malcolm Coroma, who'll be chatting to us about their wedding planning experiences. We also have special guest, Bernadette Chapman, co-director of UK Alliance of Wedding Planners, and she'll be giving wedding planning advice. So that's going to be vital for you guys out there. And we have our resident makeup specialist, Teresa Megan Gregoire, and she'll be doing a lovely makeover on our bride-to-be today. We also have bridal consultant Louise Sali from Bridal Originals and she's going to be just taking us through the latest bridal gowns. And also we have professional photographer Mark Seymour who's back with us and he's going to be sharing his secrets on how he creates the magic in photos. Plus you see what happened when I went on a love walk with my husband later on in the show. But first let's say hello to our bride-to-be Dimple. Hi Dimple. Hello. How are you my love? I'm good, I'm good. You're a little bit stressed aren't you though? A little bit stressed, it's only three weeks in. Uh, but yeah. A little bit stressed, yeah. So your wedding is actually only next year? It's next year, yeah. But you're stressed. I'm stressed now, I want to get everything organised. Okay. Um, I think I spent the first week just organising. I'm like slow down now, it's only been one week. Wow. So, yeah. Okay, so you you got proposed to two weeks, oh, sorry, two weeks, two years <laughs> after you first met your, yeah, your other half. Right. What was that like? Well, we were celebrating our two-year anniversary, so mm. I was expecting it all to be romantic anyway. Um, okay. And then he got down on one knee and I was like, whoa, what's happening here? <laughs> um, it was really, really nice. But you knew straight away it was the right time? Or were you like, mm. well, I kind of knew it was the right time before then. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wasn't one of those um, girlfriends who were like, oh, time to propose now. <laughs> okay. So what is, what is actually, do you think, the most stressful aspect of planning your wedding? I think the most stressful aspect is making sure that everyone's happy. I know you, you know, you as the bride are getting married, but yeah. it's making sure your family are happy, his family are happy, and he's happy as well. Oh, so. so it's supposed to be about you and your I know, your it's meant to be about me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so that's, that's one thing, family pressure, so we can also <laughs> speak to our wedding planner later on about that, because that, that is a big thing, because you do want that is big. Thing. Everyone to, to have a good time and you know to get the kind of wedding they want as well. So no, it's about you. <laughs> yeah, I think one of one of the things one of my friends said was you gotta remember it's your family celebrating as well. Yeah. It's yeah. not a celebration of you, it's them celebrating you. So okay. it's one thing to remember. Well that's one way of looking at it, but it's, it's I suppose <laughs> it's true, right? <laughs> and we have another stress bride to be here, don't we? Oh, yes, so yes. Megan, who is our, our wonderful resident makeup artist. So you're first of all going to be doing a makeover on, on Dimple here. Yes. What kind of look are you going to go for before we talk about your stress? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go for a nice, uh, simple look for her. She's very naturally beautiful, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just going to enhance those uh, features and especially um, brides um, makeup in general, bridal makeup, you do want to look like you. So you want just mm -hmm. to bring those natural features out. Maybe you can choose whether you want to focus on your eyes or your lips, keep the rest simple, right. get that definition for the photography and also tips on how to la make it last all day. Okay. Now, before you met Megan here, did you have a, like a, a kind of idea of the kind of look you wanted to go for? Or? I think I wanted to just keep everything simple, just mm -hmm. a bit of a smoky eye and just, yeah, keep everything simple. Okay. Thanks on the dress. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Which you'll be picking out in just a moment, I have Ooh. to say. But Megan, you're also getting married very soon. Yes, that's it's right. So what, a couple of months away now? Yes, yeah. very close. So August 9th. So. so you're actually getting married in Canada. That's right. Yes. Amazing. A, a, Amazing. a fairly, I guess, fraction of the the amount of people involved <laughs> in Dimple's wedding, but it's still going. Yes. To how be. many? How many people? Yeah. We're well, quite for the shocked. Indian wedding, we've got about 400 people. <laughs> 400 people. Yeah. <laughs> it's stressing itself, isn't it? 
<laughs> and my <laughs> list is about 80. So you can see how, I guess you're more stressed even a year. I, I, I'm not as stressed maybe. Oh, right. um, but what's but, stressing you out the most? Um, I would say just having everybody kind of prepared for the ceremony and you know, I'm, I'm one to actually like to see um, and have things. So people without outfits right now, without shoes right now, <laughs> I'm kind of thinking in, in the back of my head, you know, all the time, like, well, maybe I should check that store for those, you know, strappy ivory mm -hmm. heels or, you know, maybe I should ask about this mirror that's about, you know, the decoration. So it really just kind of consumes your day to day. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's, a, you know, always kind of a stress in the back of your mind when you have this ceremony to plan and it hasn't all just Come everything, together. you know, now have you, been in place. Have, have you considered a wedding planner? I have. I think I just want to pay someone to do everything. <laughs> I did. I did as well. But you can tell me your thoughts on why you didn't. And I didn't want someone else kind of choosing or having to deal with, I guess, someone else when, you know, you can obviously go quite wrong. And then you're there on the day and then it's like, you're supposed so to So that's be the trick that you have to find the perfect wedding planner. And that, cost. That, and yeah. cost. And yeah. and so, cost. So that you can, you know, work together and get that perfect. Because it, it's true, if you have someone that's actually helping you, it could, could take a lot of the stress off. Could. And still get what you want as well. But we'll be talking about more about that later on. <laughs> now, Dimple, we've got three dresses over there. So we'd like you to choose which one you'll be modelling for us tonight here. Oh, they're all so beautiful. Um, I think I'm going to go for the most simplest, and that's the middle one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'll be trying that on with the whole look. Lovely. I love the one at the end on, on the left it's as beautiful. well. The lace on that. Yeah, that's Stunning. absolutely gorgeous. All right, so Dimple, you've chosen the dress that you're going to try on for the makeover today yeah. and obviously you haven't actually started going looking for dresses yet have you so this will give you some kind no, of idea this is going to be the first dress that i try on oh okay <laughs> all right so we're glad we started the process off for yeah, you thank you <laughs> now megan you've obviously got a dress already can you tell us how, yes. how easy or how difficult was it to to choose a dress the perfect dress the perfect dress well i'm not even sure like i i think that i found the perfect dress or what i thought was going to be my wedding dress three times really and even the last time because they don't let you take pictures of the dress most mm -hmm. bridal shops don't um and and so it was hard to remember like what i had tried on so i went about three weekends mm -hmm. and i was trying on different dresses and i had one that had a detachable skirt so it was like i was going to go down you know the <laughs> aisle in this one long one and then i was going to show up to the dinner and it's going to be a totally different outfit oh you had it all worked out <laughs> I had it on, and then i thought well that's a bit too much maybe that's a bit too much and then the more you think about it but actually you have to order the dresses within time so mm -hmm. it ended up i just kind of you know went and my sister and I went and we said okay here's the contender here's a maybe and then and another one it ended up being the contender really okay um that we went and we didn't go with prices either because I was limiting myself which which is a reason why maybe I'm I'm saving my <laughs> coffee money taking the O2 challenge or the H2O or yeah. the H2O challenge uh -huh. um the water challenge to save but it it, it was um very about the fabric Mm. Um, but the way it kind of was naturally me and, and some, sometimes you envision maybe a whole bunch of accessories because you want it to be, but actually less is more. Are any of these dresses beautiful. similar to the one that you're wearing? Or Well, I hope nobody who's coming to the wedding has actually <laughs> tuned in at this point. But I think it's the far left one. Really? But yeah. it could it could not be. Maybe you'll change your <laughs> mind. It, kind of, it could not be. So, but yes, right. and, and um, yeah, it was surprising because you know I I definitely knew I didn't want a princess dress because that just wouldn't be me. Yeah. And so I think you kind you of have know, to be comfortable and know your style and everything, yeah. don't you? But they have also like tr like traditional, right? So if you're traditional, you probably wouldn't wear one of the more modern kind of half. You know, and also yeah, yeah. Your, your family's there, right? So if it's a little bit too revealing, you know, is it the proper one to like wear around your family? Are you going to feel comfortable? There's so many things to consider. I'll wait for the groom later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for the fact, what are you going to wear during the wedding? But yeah, no, and that, that's the thing is that there's so many things to consider. Yeah. So it, and, it, and so many accessories and Do you so see what much. you got to look forward to? Oh, she's just <laughs> stressing me out already. Oh, I, we're I, we're yeah. supposed to be calming our bride to be down, not stressing her out more. You'll have a few white hairs, I'm sure. But <laughs> oh, hey. All right, so I'm going <laughs> to... 
So I'm going to get you, let you ladies go off now and get the makeover started. Then afterwards, we'll do the big reveal with the dress on as well. But guys, don't go away because after the break, we'll also make groom to be to share his thoughts about going through the mayhem process of wedding planning. And we're very lucky to have with us the co-director of UK Alliance of Wedding Planners and co-author of Wedding Planning for Dummies. So don't go away. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to The Chrissy B Show everyone and if you've just joined us, today is all about wedding stress. So earlier we heard the struggles and stress of bride-to-be Dimple and also makeup artist Megan and now it's time to find out what the wedding planning experience is like for a groom-to-be. So please welcome first of all Malcolm Coroma. Hello. Hello Malcolm, how are you? I'm good, thank you. You don't look too stressed. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> he'll, be, <laughs> he'll be telling us about it in just a moment. And we also have the co-director of UK Alliance of Wedding Planners and co-author of Wedding Planning for Dummies, Bernadette Chapman. Hi Bernadette, how Hi, are you? I'm good, thank you. Well, let's see you in action first before we carry on. Let's take a look at this, guys. Hello, I'm Bernadette and I'm the owner of Dream Occasions Event Planning based in Essex, the co-director for the UK Alliance of Wedding Planners and the co-author of Wedding Planner for Dummies, released Spring 2014. My day normally starts with an early morning walk. I love using this time to think about what tasks I can undertake that day to help my clients. Ready, cab. When I get back in the office, I begin by checking through my emails, prioritising them and noting tasks down on my action list for the day. A lot of my job is behind the scenes. I love the logistics involved in running an event. That's probably why I have such an affinity for marquees. I love working out the complexities and providing solutions. I spend time nurturing relationships with my suppliers, meeting with them face to face to discuss clients' events and working out new innovative designs. You are, in essence, hiring us for our experience and knowledge. So whether giving advice on design, sourcing suppliers, or solving family disagreements, we are there by your side always. My tasks for the day might be very administrative at times, but they have an important end in mind. A seamlessly organized event for my clients, whether it's an anniversary party for Jane and David, or Claire and Rob's wedding. We inject personality and style to each and every client event. We never forget it's your party, your wedding. Whenever I meet new clients for the first time, I ask a variety of questions. The prime purpose is to understand what makes them tick. If they could have their dream wedding, what would it look like? What colours do they see? What music is playing and what emotion do they want to convey? I specialise in classically beautiful English weddings with an emphasis on having fun. So a special thank you to White Dress Films for that video. Right, so let's get straight to the stressed out groom-to-be and the <laughs> wedding planner. So Malcolm, why are you so stressed? What's going on? Do you know what it is? In the beginning, it wasn't so stressful because we had a year to plan it. Mm -hmm. But as it's getting closer to the date, family especially makes it quite stressful. Just be careful what you say because they might be watching. <laughs> <laughs> you don't well, want they, more, well, they want more know. stress. <laughs> well, they, they know because um, you... Well, as a groom anyway, my mm. biggest thing is to make sure that, you know, my bride is going to be happy. Aww. But then at the same time, it's your family who's celebrating basically your day as well. Mm -hmm. And it's like you have to have the balance of making your bride happy, and making your family happy as well. Okay. And that's really stressful. Is but that the main thing, would you say, or was there anything else that was um, kind of difficult? Money isn't so stressful, but... It can be mm -hmm. as well because for me, I'm the kind of person I don't want to spend on anything that seems unnecessary. But then I can't say it's unnecessary to, you know, my bride to be because it's like. Sure, you can. <laughs> yeah, with, with, with limits. <laughs> with limits because yeah. um, she wants to be happy. Yeah. 
and I want to make sure that she's happy. Mm -hmm. But then I'm looking at things and I'm like, it's a bit too much. She's like, but I really like you. And I'm like, it's too much. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, let's see if Bernadette can help with this kind of dilemma. Because obviously, we were talking earlier, like, the, the cost is one of the main things and also mm. the, the family. So obviously, this is something that's happening. Both things are happening yeah. with Malcolm. Yeah. But what, what kind of advice would you give as a wedding planner in, in that, on those kind of occasions? Okay, I think the first thing that's really important when couples first get engaged is make sure that you've got a budget. So you work out what you can afford. There's, there's one thing that I'm really against, it's couples having a wedding that they can't afford. And I think mm. nobody should be starting married life in debt. So yeah. that's number one. So work out what you can afford and what family members are going to contribute to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then spend money in the right areas. So as a couple, you need to work out what your priorities are. So is it the food? Is it the entertainment? Mm -hmm. Is it that you want that really beautiful venue? So you'll be putting the bulk of your money in those areas, but then that means you need to be spending less in other areas. Right. You, can't, you can't have it all. So you need to prioritize is the, the big thing. Mm -hmm. Don't spend money on things that you don't need. Um, always think about um, the route that you and your guests are going to take when you go to the ceremony and the reception. So when they enter, what do they see? So mm -hmm. don't, I personally think, don't do lots of little things on the tables. Do things that are in, in the eye line. That's where you should spend money. Mm -hmm. So that's the money issue. Um, the other thing with money is quite often if family members are contributing, yeah, they want a bigger say. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> quite often, what happens is they almost put a value on that money as okay, we're contributing, so therefore we want to be able to invite whoever we want. We want to have this yeah. supplier. But how do you how do you keep the peace in? Because this is supposed to be like an exciting time for mm -hmm. a bride and bride to be and everything. But then people end up getting depressed because there's just so much interference and like s s unnecessary stress. So how, yeah. how, how can you sort of get past that when they are so well, demanding, maybe? Well, if they have a wedding planner, they tend to call me. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then See, that's one, one great reason to have a wedding planner. <laughs> and then, then I mediate yeah. through the situation <laughs> and then so give, like give advice. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but assuming you don't have a wedding planner that you can rant down the phone on, mm -hmm. um, you've, you've got to sort of listen to the family member that perhaps is saying, I want to invite you know, my school friend that I haven't seen in 30 years. <laughs> you, you know, you need to say, okay, you know, the venue's got a capacity of only X yeah. amount, or this is going to sound really crass, but, you know, each guest has got a figure to their head, not yeah. just in terms of the food and the drink, but if you've got 10 extra guests, that's one whole table, that's more linen, that's yeah, another yeah, centrepiece, yeah. that's, you know, place cards. So it, you know, it adds up and it, it can be... And then I think once you then put a value to that person mm -hmm. or you put a cost to their head, you then begin to work out, do you actually really want them there at the wedding or not? Gosh, okay. that sounds really horrible, doesn't no, it? No, well, but, you know, you've got uh, to be realistic because like you say, you don't want to start off your, your married life in debt because no. that's just, you're not going to be happy when you start your, no. your marriage, so it's not, it's not worth it. It's you've just got to be sensible about things. E exactly, exactly. Now, Bernadette, why, why um, should someone think or consider a wedding planner, though? Because obviously you mentioned one great reason. <laughs> what are the other reasons maybe that can take some of the stress off? It, I think one way to look upon it is we're a bit like having a PA. Mm -hmm. for the time that you're planning your wedding. Now, not everybody needs a wedding planner, and we would never say that. Um, but for some people, it can be beneficial, particularly if you're having a very large wedding, mm. if you're having a complex wedding. Like 400 guests for our uh, yeah, <laughs> place to be it, over there. Exactly. Um, but I mean, also sort of talking for myself with a lot of my clients, they mm. um, run their own businesses. So they don't oh, have time. time right and there. so, you know, they, they leave me ready to do the legwork and then they make decisions always. Mm -hmm. But even if you can't afford someone from start to finish, um, I find that a lot of bride and grooms get stressed in the last couple of months okay. leading up to the wedding. Yeah. So why not have a wedding planner just for partial planning? Someone okay. that about eight to ten weeks um, before the wedding will just almost take over, look through the contracts, oh, that's a good idea. reconfirm yeah. all the suppliers. Mm. And it's quite helpful to have somebody else that can look through in case you've missed anything very vital <laughs> because we know things that, that a yeah, bride and groom yeah, wouldn't yeah. know. 
um, because you would. Have you checked all your stuff? Like all um, paperwork we and. <laughs> always check. Mm. But how do you know you haven't missed something? <laughs> I'm stressing yeah. out even more. Oh, we have a wedding planner. <laughs> oh, okay. Ah, yeah. right, there, there you go. go. So yeah. that helps. We have a yeah. wedding planner and she has some people who helps out as well. So that really does oh. help. Okay. Takes a bit of the so load. So you definitely recommend it then? Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> get a wedding planner. Now, but just before we go, do you get like really stressed out brides? Or is it mainly the grooms are stressed out like Malcolm? <laughs> Do you ever Is see like, anyone come into you in tears and say, look, I don't know what to do anymore, I can't take it, please help, or are most people quite calm? It's going to sound a bit big-headed, but they tend not to be stressed because they have got me. So <laughs> um, you, you have little moments, but yeah. it is normally because they've had an argument with the mum. Oh. Or, you know, things like that. You know, they get stressed about that. You know, I've had some brides say, you know, I don't want my mum in the room when I'm getting ready because I know she's going to stress me out. Oh. Um, and so sometimes I have to deal with those situations. Um, okay. And, but you just deal with it. I mean, it's... You must be very strong to, <laughs> to deal with all of these things, it's, I imagine. It just goes like over you become part of the family and just like... Yeah, I think because I do lots of marquees as well, yeah. um, I'm very much part of the family mm. and I'm, you know, I'm in and out of the house all the time and, and it, we've developed such a strong bond that it's, yeah, it's quite imagine. sad when the wedding's it's over. over. <laughs> actually, talking of sad when the wedding's over, later on I'll be covering some tips for brides to be that actually get really, or brides actually that get really depressed after their wedding and maybe grooms as yeah. well so I'll be talking about that later on because yeah. you can't get depressed after your wedding please oh, we're going to give you some very common. it is common so we'll yeah. be helping our viewers with that as well oh, Bernadette good. thank you so much my pleasure it's great advice that you gave thank and actually you. if you do want to um, get a wedding planning advice from Bernadette you can visit her website dream-occasions.co.uk for all of her services all right and Malcolm all the best with Thank your you. upcoming wedding. Thank you. Just put all the stress on your wedding planner, get them to deal with the family. Yeah, stuff, I think yeah? I'm going to do that. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, so up next, we come back to our bride to be Dimple and reveal her wedding makeover. So we'll be right back. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to today's show where we are learning all about wedding stress. And just before the break, we met Malcolm who talks about his wedding prep experience and we had Bernadette Chapman from UK Alliance of Wedding Planners. So now it's time where we get to see Dimple's wedding makeover. So let's take a look at a photo before. Very gorgeous. And now let's take a look at the wedding look that we have for today. Absolutely gorgeous. So Megan, well done with the makeup. How do you, how do you feel with the makeup? I feel like a princess. Oh, <laughs> you did a brilliant job. Okay, we're going to talk about your dress in just a moment, but t tell us quickly what you did on, on Dimple here. Yeah, so we've created a very um, enhancing her natural beauty type look, which mm -hmm. as a bride, you want to look natural, you want to look like you. Yeah. So, like I said, about picking, I guess, a feature that you like the, the most and, and, and kind of bringing that out, she wanted to bring out her eyes. Mm -hmm. So we kept uh, the cheeks and the lip very simple yeah. with a dusty rose and we've got a combination of um, a little bit of um, cream sheen of a nude in the middle to get that reflection and as you know and, and the photographer would know those um, little bits um, of detail with the light and the way mm -hmm. that those pictures actually turn out on your wedding day have to do with those little wedding touches that wedding makeup has for instance the highlight on the top, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the very blended eyeshadow and, you know, the sparkle in the inner bits of her, of her eye. So when she's looking and, and around and all eyes are always on the bride, you're going to mm -hmm. see those bits of light reflect, especially if you're at a candlelight dinner, it just, you know, ev ev everywhere. And you're going to have, you know, your little touch up for your lips because you'll be That's kissing. Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously we've worn a primer to keep mm -hmm. that gorgeous look. Um, well, she looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, she's done she, a great job as usual. Amazing. So you think you'll Thank go for you. this for your wedding day? I think I found my makeup artist. Oh, cool. There you go. Because <laughs> right, let's go to the dress. I think it was actually wearing a dress from Bridal Originals. And you can visit their website, uh, bridaloriginals.co.uk, for more information. And we have with us Louise 
how do you say your surname? Sali. Sali. <laughs> Sali. We have Louise Sali with us, who's uh, from Bridal Originals, who dressed in for today. So, hi, welcome hi. to the show. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, tell us about the look that she's gone for here. Okay, so um, obviously, she's chosen a very simple chiffon gown. Um, it's from the Dimitrios collection, um, and it's one of their destination dresses. So, um, yeah, we've got the beautiful um, chiffon rouging across the top half here. Um, and then you've got the drape across the front, which is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you have the beautiful bead and pearl work there, um, okay. which we've matched up with the hair comb that you see. Which is lovely, okay. yeah. I okay. think it's worth mentioning that the little bits that extend out can actually be shaped, so yeah. the hairstylist <laughs> should know those things to create yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, okay. I mean, you pick up quite a lot when you work in the wedding industry, especially mm -hmm. in the bridal shop. Um, what's popular, what's not, but also like um, what a hair and makeup artist might be looking for. Mm. So um, yeah, it's, it's worth noting that a lot of tiaras are made with um, silver thread so that mm -hmm. you can shape and mold them to All your right, hairstyle. okay, that's good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so thank you so much, thank Louise, you. for dressing our lovely bride today. And now we have Mark Seymour with us as well. Hello, Mark. How are you? Hello, Chrissy. <laughs> now, you are you. a professional photographer. Yes. You do lots of weddings. Yes. Now, tell us, um, what's yeah. really important when choosing the, the wedding photographer for your special day? I think the first thing is to do is ask for recommendations um, from friends, family, hotels, go to the professional bodies like the Guild of Photographers and ask them who they recommend and who are the best photographers. Secondly, decide which style you want. There's many different styles of photographer. Um, my personal style is very documentary, so I don't have a lot of input on the day. I actually go around and catch the day as it happens naturally. It's not about my photo shoot, it's Which about your wedding have, day. You've got a few here, so typically, you? you know, we're looking to take beautiful images, you know, like this here, I love that one. Um, which tell a story about your wedding day. Mm -hmm. um, I do very I'll little posing up. on the day. Mm -hmm. um, I am classically trained, but most of the day is captured as it happens. So little images like this, none of it's posed. It just happens yeah. on your wedding day. And you know, no other bride will have any pictures like these. Your wedding pictures will be totally unique to you because mm. every little moment that happens will be unique to your wedding day and it's up to the photographer to try and capture those yeah. to bring back memories. Now, Mark, something that a lot of brides especially, I think <clears> they <throat> get stressed out about, because, you know, the day is quite stressful anyway and mm. they wanted to please guess. How can a bride look, not, not look stressed, and look actually happy and <clears throat> as slim as possible, like some of many of them worry about? Okay. What, what, what kind of tips could you give? Well, I mean, there's two questions there. The first one <laughs> uh, is about being happy, and, and I think the best thing is to do all that planning before and on the day, just let it happen. You know, what's going to be will be, and you can't control it. Just go with the flow, mm. and the vibes that you give off will, will be there for the rest of the guests, and they'll all be relaxed about it if you're relaxed. Whereas if you're stressed, that'll show through with all the guests, and they'll all be stressed as well. So just let it flow, just let it happen. Safara's looking fabulous. You know, it's. Uh, there's lots of little thick poses we can do when Come we're on. doing the bride and groom shots. <laughs> yeah. um, We've got four women here. To <laughs> <laughs> no pressure here. But you know, when, when I'm doing pictures of you by yourself, you know, sometimes we're coming quite close. One of the a great right. tip is to make the eyes look fabulous. Is just to dip the chin a little bit and get the guy to look to the top, get the girl to look to the top, so it opens up the eye. So you see a little bit of white underneath. We call it mm. like a canoe as a, a photographer because it's a bit of white there and it suddenly makes your eyes go bang, wow, which is what it's all about. You know, you, <laughs> you want people to, to be grabbed into the photograph. You're getting all these tips for you, Zora, yeah. for your for wedding day. Yeah, secondly, when you're standing, um, try and stand rather than fall straight on, try and stand to an angle and point your foot towards the camera because side on is always more flattering than, than square on. Um, so that's, that's sort of the main two tips and just enjoy it and let it go with the flow. And, uh, whoever you choose, just say, oh, I trust you, get on with it and let them do what they need to do. What about grooms? Do you have any trouble with grooms sometimes with photography? No, in fact, um, grooms, a lot of grooms take a back seat mm. the whole way through the wedding. And um, in fact, because the bride knows what's going on, has been in total control of most of the planning, yeah. she's more relaxed sometimes than the groom because the groom is all kind of, <laughs> kind of new to him. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, the guys want to get back to being with their friends. They want to get, be back to the party. They don't want the photography. 
Um, mm. They want it, but they don't want to be to give their time for it. Yeah. So the documentary <laughs> style really lends itself to that type of wedding where you know, they can go and enjoy their time with the friends and let, trust the photographer to capture those special yeah, moments those. when he's with his friends or when she's with her friends. And also with parents, you know, they go to their friends at, at the wedding more so than mm -hmm. your friends, etc. So you get those natural little groupings of people, beautiful smiles, beautiful reactions, and just we're there to capture those moments. So when you look back at a wedding album like we've got here from Loxley's, you know, you just look at them and you just just it brings back a memory of your wedding day. It's not just a load of groups, it's about a story that is told. Okay, brilliant. So lots of helpful hints from everyone for you today. How are you feeling about your, your wedding? A bit less stressed? A little bit less stressed. Right, okay. <laughs> but I'm course. sure it's going to go. And about, have you sorted out photography yet? I haven't. I haven't looked at anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you do want more information about Mark, you can visit his website, markseymourphotographer.co.uk. Now, just back to Louise before we go to a break. Can you tell us a bit more about maybe the, the kind of dresses most brides are going for this year? Yeah, so... Um, it used to be very popular that people would go for the more sort of ball gown style, mm -hmm. but we're moving much more towards the um, more fishtail style that you're seeing here now. Okay. So that means that it's fitted right down to the knee with the mm -hmm. net underneath that helps the bottom stick out. Yeah. Um, a very popular request as well is the full lace. Mm -hmm. um, not so much the beadwork anymore. Um, and also ivory over white. Really? Yes. Okay. Um, a lot of people feel that white washes them out Mm -hmm. or um, they've been with their partner for a number of years and they don't feel that white is appropriate anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, and, and also a lot of brides um, like to go with um, matching bridesmaids dresses as well. So oh, right, bridesmaids okay. dresses that follow the same line as theirs or, um, or even the same colour. Okay, mm. all right. So it's lots to choose from, obviously, because maybe yep. sometimes brides don't follow the traditional type of yeah. wedding dresses, do they? So they can be quite original if they want as well. Exactly. Do you and get any like wacky kind of requests for dresses? Or? Um, we recently did a red one. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. And yeah, she, she wanted something really special. Okay. So we were able oh, to so sort you that out for her. Talk yeah. to your clients and stuff. And work yeah, out yeah. Things. We have a number of stockists that we work with. So, um, and, and one of them, um, actually is able to manufacture dresses in different colours. So oh, right. yeah, they okay. have a number of different colours that you can go for. Oh, really? oh that's good to mm -hmm. know. I'm sure that will help our brides <laughs> out there, our brides to be. Yep. All right guys, so thank you so much for everybody to come in today and giving your, your advice. It's been really good and I hope you enjoy your, your wedding next year. <laughs> Maybe you can send us some pictures <laughs> and we can revisit you. <laughs> and all the best with yours as well. But you, you need you. to take you need to send us some pictures so we can show our viewers. I'm sure they'd be interested as yeah, well. Yeah, so well done. Yeah. All right guys. Well don't go away because after this quick break I'll be sharing my own wisdom on how to beat the post-wedding blues, only here on The Chrissy B Show. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to today's program, which is all about wedding stress. Now, there are brides that get really, really depressed after their wedding day. And there's actually an expression called post-nuptial depression, or PNB. And Philip Hodson of the British Association of Counselors and Psychotherapists says the number of people seeking help for PNB has risen in the past 20 years. And just to read something um, from a newlywed, she said, this is Gemma Hall, she said, I spent three years planning my perfect wedding day and after it was over, there was a gaping hole in my life. I felt so depressed. I just kept wondering to myself, is this it? Is this all there is to life now? I couldn't watch the DVD or look at my wedding photos. They all reminded me about a special time that was now over. So we really don't want you to go through anything like that. So here are a few tips for you to avoid this PNB that's you know really hitting a lot of people. So the first reason is do it for the right reasons. So make sure that you are getting married for the right reasons. And you might say, well, how can, how can you be getting married for the wrong reasons? Well, there's many wrong reasons for getting married. Sometimes people do it because they want children and they just want to have maybe like the, the traditional uh, setting for having kids. 
Some people do it because they want to get away from maybe an overbearing family. So there's lots of wrong reasons to get married. So make sure you are getting married because you love the person and you want to add to their life. Number two is to fix your problems first. So also that's another reason why some people actually decide to get married because they're having problems in their relationship and they're having certain issues they think that getting married is actually going to to solve that when in actual fact you'll probably find that things will get worse or perhaps you know one partner sees that you know they're going to lose their other half so they propose so that's another reason why uh, some people do it so don't get married just to fix something but make sure you are getting married again going back to the first point fix your problems first and then get married. And talking of um, sort of trying to fix things, last week I went on an annual event called the Love Walk and it's a, it's a must-do activity for all couples, I have to say. So whether you're dating or have been married for like 20 years, something like this is really good to go on to maintain your relationship. But also for those that are uh, dating, it's very, it was a very good um, opportunity to get to know your partner better as well because obviously you need to know who you're getting married to first. So let's, let's take a look at this video and we'll talk more about it when we come back. We do this event like once a year, uh, and we, we really try to get couples to come in and, and take a few hours to sit down and go through some questions that can really help improve their relationship. Also, there are couples who come like on a first date. Uh, so this can be a, a very good beginning, can also be a very good middle, <laughs> right? And to improve the relationships. That's what we hope to, to achieve through the Love Walk. Most people have no clue of how to live, you know, with someone else. They date, they get engaged, they get married, they plan until the honeymoon, and afterwards they say, now what? The idea of the Love Walk is to give couples and single people the opportunity to communicate. Well, it's basically an investment in our relationship. We have been married almost 17 years now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but there's always more to learn. And it's pretty quiet in general, so this is like an opportunity for me to ask as many questions as possible today and really get into the deep stuff as well. We've been together for 14 years and every time we come, this is our third love walk, uh, it's like we, we, we learn something completely new about each other. Marriage is a long journey, but how can there be agreement if there's no communication? It's been an eye-opener. There were things that we kind of knew, you know, how things are going and so on, but there were things that we, like, touchy subjects that I think we were kind of... I think there's some subjects that we kind of, like, used to put under the carpet, and today with this event, we bring it all out and deal with it in a good manner. There are some questions which I could not sit him down at home and ask him, but today I've got the opportunity to ask him those questions. That have been inside me. We're doing our individual take on the questions answers before we then share what we've written and that should help encourage greater use of dialogue. I think we're going to walk away from here knowing more about each other and building on that relationship basically. Yeah, building on, on our marriage and making sure that everything goes in the right direction. It was a privilege to have the time to be able to do that because during the week we're very busy working and hustle and bustle so it's nice to take time out to do that. Um, we've come because you know we heard it's going to be a great event uh, but a lot of couples to learn from I mean to even you know influence each other in terms of like uh, relationships marriage I mean we've only been married like a, a week and a half now yeah so we went two years ago we we're just dating now we're married so different lifestyle 
different questions, different things to find out a bit about each other and to improve our relationship. Every Love Walk event, we look forward for it. I will never miss any, so we are glad this one has taken place today and we are here today. That was really good fun and I did learn a lot more about my husband so you know you should always always keep investing in your relationship with things like this and general communication so I have to whiz through the other points because I've almost run out of time but let's quickly go to the third point which is to be realistic now according to experts the blues typically hit early on in the marriage usually because couples have unrealistic expectations of what marriage should actually be so once the big day is over they get on with it and you know real life kicks in so marriage is wonderful in my opinion but be realistic know that it's not the wedding that actually makes the marriage it's what you do after that that's really important so yes a wedding a wonderful wedding is lovely but make sure you understand that marriage is hard work and you do have to make sacrifices and compromises for everything to run smoothly number four is to make it about your partner so some people get so involved in the wedding uh, itself that they kind of forget that it's actually about marrying the person that they love so um, actually, Denise Knowles, she's a counsellor for Relate for more than 20 years, says that couples who have lavish weddings are more likely to actually suffer from PNB. So she says, uh, let me just get the quote here. If you start off with an expensive party where you've been the centre of attention, then you come back to paying the bills and wiping the floor, of course, marriage is going to seem mundane. So make sure you kind of focus on why you're getting married in the first place. Make, make the focus your partner being the centre of attention as well and, and after the wedding you're more likely to actually look forward to spending the rest of your life with that person instead of thinking oh my wedding's over and you know all that kind of stuff that comes. Alrighty, the next point is don't overspend. So we did touch on this earlier and our, our wedding planner Bernadette mentioned that as well. Don't overspend or else you're going to have huge debts when you're first married and that will cause a lot of stress and maybe even mental health issues so don't go down that road if you can help it number six is to get on with it so forget now about being the uh, the bride or you know the, the groom now you are newlywed so what i would advise you to do if you're feeling a bit low stop flicking through the bridal magazines for example actually get rid of them throw them away um, Get rid of any reminders of like wedding planning so you, you know you can start focusing on something else and if it helps you can even focus on a completely new project uh, to get your teeth stuck into it or maybe even think of ways okay now i'm married how can i please my partner or how can i make them happy and you'll see that when you focus uh, again on your partner on other things you'll find that you probably won't feel so down and you'll you won't fall into that depression that some people do you can even actually plan a short break away. That's something else to look forward to. All right, let's go to the next point. Don't forget about you. So a mistake that many couples make when they first get married is they kind of uh, stop doing the things that they used to do. So for example, have your me time, allow your partner to have his or her me time as well, where they, you know, you can just relax and do the things that you like doing. Don't forget about your hobbies and the things that you like doing as well. So make sure you are balanced. And number eight, remember that it's not the end. It's not the end at all. So think of your wedding day as one of the best days in your life, but not the best. So you are going to have many more fantastic days together with your partner. That could include like uh, starting a family or starting your, moving into your first home. There's so many things to look forward to. So it's not the end. You've got lots of things to plan together. Well, I hope that those tips have helped you, but obviously if you want more information and more advice, you can contact me via the website by filling in the form. But remember, overall, the wedding is just the start of a marriage. Marriage takes work, sacrifice and commitment. And if you're willing to put the work in, the rewards are amazing and your marriage will be lovely. But that's all we have time for today. And if you have a story to tell us or an experience to share to help others, do contact us by filling in the form on chrissybshow.tv. And also, if you want to share your wedding memories with us, let us know by tweeting us your photos and videos at Chrissy B Show or commenting on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. I would like to thank all our lovely guests today and hope you at home enjoyed the show and learned something today as I have. Till next time, bye bye for now. A lovely model from our. Ah. I was doing so well. 
Pardon? Including our lovely mum. <laughs> Let's try it and if I get it right then you can... No idea what I'm doing, but okay. Please don't let me do the whole thing again. Thank you. I'm sorry. There was a word that I didn't recognise. VTs. 